Hi, in this video we'll talk about the beta and Dirichlet distributions. So let's say that you have a coin and you want to model your belief on the unknown probability x of heads. So you could have a probability distribution over your belief in the probability of heads. For example, here you might think that it's most likely that the probability is 0.5, somewhat likely that it's 0.8, and less likely that the probability of heads is 0.37. Or after you've observed more flips, you could think that it's most likely that it's 0.37 and less likely that it's these. Okay, but what if you wanted it to be possible for it to be any value between 0 and 1, because probabilities can be any real number in this range? We need a continuous random variable. For example, if you think that the probability is probably around 20%, you might use this distribution, so it's most likely that the probability of heads is close to 20%. Or if you think that it's around 80%, you might use this distribution. Or if you have no idea and you want to make every probability equally likely, you could use a uniform like this. But these two don't make any sense because uh, there's no possible sequence of flips that could result in a belief that is bimodal or has two peaks like this. So therefore those wouldn't really make any sense to model your belief. Okay, so let's do some more examples. So like if you flip a coin with an unknown probability of heads x, what does your belief distribution look like first if you didn't observe anything? Well it's uniform like we discussed because since we have no historical data so every single valid probability should just be treated as equally likely, we have no reason to prefer any over the other. Uh, what if you observed eight heads and two tails? Well, in that case, you'd expect that the probability is around 80% of heads, but you have a lot of uncertainty because you've only seen 10 flips. Like, it could just be that the coin is actually fair, and you just happen to have a coincidence where you had more heads than tails. So it could be like this graph over here. What about 80 heads and 20 tails? Again, you expect it to be around 80%, but now since you have more flips, so you can be a little bit more certain in that the probability is probably much closer to 80%. Okay, what about two heads and three tails? Again, you'd expect it to be about like two over five, but in this case, we've only observed five flips, so really the probability of heads could be almost anywhere, so this distribution might be better. Great. Okay, so now we can use the beta distribution, which has two parameters, alpha and beta, uh, to model this, and notice that it's the following PDF. So the first term is just a normalizing constant, not important, it just helps it integrate to one. And then we have x, which is our predicted probability of heads or success, raised to the alpha minus one power, so we assume that we've seen alpha minus one successes, and then one minus x is the probability of failure, raised to the beta minus one power, which is the number of failures we assume we've seen. Uh, so in general, x is typically the belief distribution about some unknown probability of success, where we pretend we saw alpha minus 1 successes and beta minus 1 failures ahead of time. Uh, and notice that this is pretty similar to the binomial mass function, but here the probability distribution is over x. x is the probability of success, which we do not know. Whereas in the binomial, we did know the probability of success and we're taking the distribution over the possible outcomes of the flips. Okay, so in this case, the mode, or the most likely value of the probability is just the number of successes divided by number of successes plus number of failures. Okay, so again, let's do some examples. So if you flip a coin with unknown probability of heads x, then your distribution, if you didn't observe anything, would just be beta of 0 plus 1, 0 plus 1, because you have observed 0 successes and failures before, so we have to add 1, so beta 1, 1. And this is the same as a uniform, by the way, so it has no mode. Okay, so what if you observe eight heads and two tails? Well, you need a beta distribution with eight plus one as alpha and two plus one as beta. So we have beta nine, three, and the mode is again, eight over 10, number of successes over total number of flips. And what about 80 heads and 20 tails? Again, we have beta of 80 plus one and then 20 plus one, and the mode is 80 over 100. What if you observe two heads and three tails? Well, we have beta of two plus one and then three plus one. So beta three, four, and then the mode is two fifths. Okay, and the Dirichlet distribution is basically very similar, except we generalize it to more than two possible outcomes. In beta, we only had success or failure, but in Dirichlet, you could have many possible outcomes. So for example, we just still take the product for over all the possible outcomes of the probability of that outcome, uh, raised to the number of times that outcome occurred. Yeah. And basically notice that this is the probability distribution over the random vector xi's, which is the vector of probabilities of each of the outcomes that must sum to one. Okay, and this is a generalization of the beta random variable again from two outcomes to R, and the random vector is typically the belief distribution over some unknown probabilities of different outcomes, where we pretend we saw alpha minus one outcomes of, sorry, alpha one minus one outcomes of type one, alpha two minus one outcomes of type two, and et cetera. And the mode of the distribution is just the vector of the fractions of the number of times each outcome occurred. Thank you.